I'm talking about post-2001 uh, developments, and after 2002, the, uh, uh, especially when there were uh, the, the MMA bombings in NWFP in Pakistan, but uh, soon after, I would say 2011, the religious opposition in Pakistan started accusing the Musharraf government of fighting a U.S. war. The Pakistani army was engaged in a difficult military action on unfamiliar ground, both in terms of terrain and operational tactics. In addition, the provincial governments in NWFP and Luchistan were controlled by a religious coalition of MMA, uh, the rising militancy in Pakistan and the regrouping and revival of Afghan Taliban gave rise to constant incrimination, uh, recrimination and accusations between Pakistan and Afghanistan and at the operational level between the Pakistan side and the ISAF as well as the UN and calls for Pakistan to do more. Pakistan was blamed for keeping the Taliban option alive, citing the existence of safe haven and hideouts for Al-Qaeda and Afghan Taliban leadership in Pakistan. Media leaks suggested continuing ISI and army protection to Taliban and extremists. The impatience with Pakistan was reflected in the drone attacks, uh, which uh, in numbers continued to increase, especially after late 2007. And uh, even an attempted, uh, I would say, a ISAF uh, border incursion in early 2008, which was strongly protested by Pakistan, and since then there had been no such incident. On the other hand, uh, Pakistan saw in these accusations an effort to place the blame on its doorsteps for policy failures on the part of the coalition inside Afghanistan, which was reflected in the earlier in the insensitivity to the ethnic question, distraction by uh, the uh, Iraq engagement, failure of recon reconciliation and reconstruction effort regression of uh, uh, Afghanistan into a fragmented state with uh, warlords, drug mafias, criminal mafias operating in that country. Uh, incidentally, criminal mafias and drug mafias also operate now in, in the tribal areas. Uh, and part of the, the funds which uh, these uh, militants get is basically smuggling funds from generated from charities, charities inside Pakistan and charities uh, from the Gulf, as well as uh, 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 the drug money. These, these mafias, they have uh, an interest in the continuation of the turmoil and lack of responsiveness to Pakistani requirements. Uh, uh, also, you see, the, the, the Pakistan, uh, this is one of the Pakistani uh, nuances which is a lack of responsiveness to Pakistani requirements for capacity building for counter insurgency operations. This has also been that like for example we had requested for helicopters way back in 2004. They were not delivered uh, until 2007, so and so forth. Many other areas. The so-called ROZ is still not operational. idea is uh, five years old. Uh, much of its potential is now also being drained. There was also this feeling that Pakistani sacrifices, because Pakistan lost early on in the first two years uh, almost 1,000 and later on uh, continued and we have lost uh, more than 2,000 of our army personnel, apart from the civilian casualties and other security forces, the police, etc. Uh, so, uh, uh, these uh, these accusations they uh, in a way uh, created more of uh, bad blood uh, uh, rather than impacting on uh, uh, Pakistan to do, to, to do more. I have also discussed in this study that this uh, whole issue of the Taliban option in policy terms it has never been considered a viable option. There may have been linkages, linkages, personal levels, etc., and that may be responsible for uh, people 
uh, not uh, linked with ISI but who may have belonged to ISI in the past or uh, other people who may have uh, been in, in, in government positions uh, who may have uh, uh, had uh, linkages and may have continued these linkages. But as a government, Taliban option is no longer an, uh, a viable option. Even if tomorrow the United States were to withdraw from Afghanistan, Taliban mm -hmm. is no longer a viable option. Uh, there are other actors in the region. Then there are other forces within Afghanistan who are not going to allow the same kind of dispensation as had existed prior to 2001 to return in Kabul. It is not possible. However, reconciliation, that means co-opting of the Taliban uh, uh, elements. And there were efforts, efforts even in even 2001, Pakistan tried, Pakistan tried even uh, this Jalaluddin Haqqani, the famous Mujahideen uh, commander from Post, who is also very controversial uh, today. Uh, uh, there, there was uh, some feelers said that, okay, uh, can he be accommodated in some kind of a, a dispensation? But in 2001 or 2002, when the bone process really started, at that time, the Taliban was an odious name. So nobody was prepared to take them with a barge pole. Although they were part of uh, the Afghan society, an important part, they had ruled the, uh, much of Afghanistan, so regardless of the nature of the rule, but they had ruled for, for a long time, the, almost uh, This raises the question of where lies the center of gravity of this conundrum. <coughs> Islamabad and Kabul naturally differ and uh, now the view has uh, slightly been modified, but earlier uh, uh, they wanted the world to be that uh, it uh, lies uh, or it lay across the border in the other country. Uh, since uh, early 2007, uh, however, Pakistan appeared to lose the argument as is evident from today, from the description of the new U.S. approach as AFPAC policy, uh, lumping the two together. Dick Cheney visited in Islamabad in February 2007 and for the first time spoke of possible sustained air strikes to take out Al-Qaeda and Taliban hideouts inside the Fata region. Uh, uh, there is no well-defined center of gravity which, if targeted, would unravel the conflict situation and set it moving towards stabilization. Accordingly, there is no quick fix to addressing the situation that poses complex overlapping challenges. When we speak of the need for a comprehensive approach, we conceive this com complexity which must also prepare us for a long haul. This is a 30-year-old problem which has been compounded by acts of mostly commission and partly omission by all major players in the region including in good measure by the United States. It is yet to be seen whether this time the U.S. would display the stamina and engage comprehensively to break the cycle of conflict to the extent that partner Afghanistan starts moving towards normalcy. On the other hand, turning away from Afghanistan could be a costly option as proved by the history of the past indifference to that country. As for extremism in Pakistan, it now has the muscle of the Madrasa youth and a spiritual motivation from a mix of orthodox and jihadist view of Islam and the world. It has a socio-political impulse generated by depressed economic circumstances which are marked by narrowing opportunities, rising unemployment, increasing demographic pressure and widening class disparities in the country. The 30-year Afghan conflict and the festing Kashmir issue has helped to shape the phenomena in an environment and culture that is receptive and conducive to its growth. The situation has to be arrested and reversed. The challenge is enormous. Musharraf's reform program to counter extremists did not go very far, and I have discussed these factors.